Teresa Tamio is our speaker up next. Let me just tell you, she's one of my best buds. So I was really um, blessed to be able to invite her to come and uh, speak with us today. And she's actually been staying at my house for a couple days, so we had more than, I'd say, 12 hours so far of conversation. What do you think? <laughs> Teresa Otamio is an author, syndicated Catholic talk show host, and motivational speaker with nearly 30 years, and she's only 32, I don't know how she did that, 30 years of experience in TV, radio, and newspaper. In 2000, Teresa left the secular media to start her own speaking and communications company. Talk about living in the center of God's will. Teresa's daily morning radio show, um, The Con Catholic Connection, is now heard on over 150 Catholic stations nationwide, including Redeemer Radio here in Fort Wayne. <laughs> Last year, Teresa was chosen as one of 250 delegates from around the world. One of 250 to attend the Vatican Women's Congress held in Rome, marking the 20th anniversary of John Paul's The Second Letter, entitled, On the Dignity and Vocation of Women. As a speaker, Teresa travels around the country, I've been to Rome with her, I know, <laughs> addressing, and you too can go in May, by the way, uh, addressing media awareness and activism, as well as sharing her reversion to the Catholic Church. Her first book, Noise, how Our Media-Saturated Culture Dominates Lives and Dismantles Families was published by Ascension Press and is a Catholic bestseller and now in its second printing. Her second book, News Flash, My Surprising Journey from Secular Anchor to Media and Evangelist, I want you to watch this right now. See, now memorize that because the back of my head is in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I made the book, but it's the back of my head. It was <laughs> published in September of 2008. Teresa has also co-authored a serious series of books called All Things Girl for tween girls focusing on modesty and chastity. Today, Teresa will be encouraging us to stand up to the culture of death and move forward in fighting for the good fight in the pro-life movement. One of my best buds, Teresa Tamio. Good afternoon, Fort Wayne. How are you? So good to see you. Thank you so much for coming out on such a beautiful day when you could be anywhere else, but you're here to celebrate life and to come together with us as a Christian family. Whether we're Protestant or Catholic, we all um, have only the grace of God to thank for where we are, and that's why I'm here, for Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. Well, just a couple of things um, I want to say before I begin. First of all, thank you to the wonderful folks with Allen County Right to Life and also with Redeemer Radio for promoting this event. Let's give them a round of applause for their great support. And Julie is in the back of the book. Uh, she was actually with us in the um, studios when I was doing the show live from Washington for the March for Life a couple of years ago, and so I had my husband take some pictures and in the back of my book, Newsflash, which is on sale along with noise here today, there's a great picture of Julie and Lisa Peters from uh, Right to Life of Michigan, and we're in there chatting away, and there's Julie with her adorable head. <laughs> Only you had your hair, I think, pulled up, kind of an upswept do. It was very, very attractive, yeah. But I, I am here to talk to you about how do we continue this fight. Uh, many of you who may have been involved in 40 Days for Life for the first time, uh, maybe some of you have been involved in this for a while. Uh, whatever the case, Let's not let this be the end. I really believe that we have to use experiences like this, which in many cases can be a mountaintop experience because we come together as, as believers and we see a lot of miracles in terms of babies that are saved and women that are saved and people that, as Julie said, maybe you know, brought to Christ for the first time or maybe brought back to Christ after they've fallen away. But we have to remember that the devil is working over time, especially in today's culture. And I never thought that I would be out speaking and telling people about the media and the cultural influence, because the media, that was my idol. 
and the media and my addiction to my career and my narcissism about myself and being all that in a bag of chips, as my friend Julie likes to say, at least I thought it was all that in a bag of chips, it almost cost me my marriage and more importantly, my soul. And the only reason I'm here today is by the grace of God. You know, I speak around the country, as Julie said, uh, several times a month. I'm in, in the fall, I'm, I'm barely even home except during the week to do my radio show. And I know that I get in the cab and I go to Detroit Metro Airport and I fly to Fort Wayne or to Albuquerque where I was last week or to Chicago to do a talk. But every time I'm up here behind the microphone, it is still just a miracle to me because, you know, in listening to my program, you may think that I was always pro-life. That wasn't the case. I was quote unquote pro-choice, and I don't even like using that term because it's so hypocritical and it's such a political spin. And the whole reason they use the word choice is to confuse us and to make us think that choice is a good thing. Well, you, you know that story, but the point is, is that I was so far away from God and so far away from anything holy and bought into so many of the lies of the culture. And it started when I was very young. I was affected so much by the media when I was a child that I succumbed to an eating disorder because I wanted to look like a particular star on television and I also knew that I was going to be in the media at a very young age. God gave this gift to me of knowing that, go figure, I've got the gift for gab, so I'm gonna be you know, talking professionally for a living. But I got caught up in the culture thinking that I had to look and act a certain way and bought into many of the messages very early on. And even though I recovered from my eating disorder of anorexia, I didn't recover from the power of the culture. And that pull, I believe, is stronger than ever. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to, because my area of expertise, I don't know too much, but I do know the media. And that's my area of expertise. As Julie said, I've actually been in the business now, just professionally, for almost 30 years. I actually started when I was five, so I'm only 35. But actually, I just turned 50, but I think I look pretty good. It's olive oil of Olay, is what we talk about. <laughs> Did I mention I was Italian? I don't know if I mentioned that yet. But I've been in the business now for almost 30 years, and actually in college I was on radio and TV, and actually started in radio in high school when I was 14, so I guess if you add all that up, it's almost 40 years. This is what I know, and I've lived and breathed this stuff for as long as I can remember. So nobody can sit there and tell me that the media isn't influencing us. A, because I was influenced as a child back in the 70s by TV, so much so that I ended up in a hospital and almost died from an eating disorder. And then having worked in the industry, for almost 30 years now professionally, being in the newsrooms, being a news director, being in one of the largest markets in the country, doing freelance work for the networks, all this kind of stuff. So God has given me, through the good and the bad and the ugly, a great deal of experience and insight into how these messages shape us, not only from working in the media, but unfortunately allowing myself for so many years to be shaped by the culture. So what I want to give you today is kind of, we don't have the full, I don't have a full hour, I have about 30, 40 minutes, but I'm going to try to give you a thumbnail sketch of what it's like out there in the culture. Now, I know that most of you know that it's bad. You realize that. You know, if you're a believer, you understand that if you're a Christian, you're going to be attacked. We're in the world, not of the world. You get that. But what I want to give you is some more inside information from an insider and some messages and some the way the media shape the messages is very, very important. So because if you're going to continue out there and if you're going to fight this culture of death, you need all the information and the knowledge that you can have in order to fight it. We have to know who the enemy is. And these messages are thrown at us 24-7. It is absolutely overwhelming what's coming at us. And I would venture to say that the majority of it, probably 99% of it, is anti-Christian and certainly unfriendly when it comes to the life issues.